Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to uh, show you how to set up um, um, GeoChombo uh, using Docker. So first of all, I might ask you to uh, to open a new uh, uh, browser window, window and go to, to docker.com. And here you can download the corresponding Docker, Docker version you need. So um, I guess here in my case, it would be of course uh, for Mac, but of course it should be also for Windows or for, for Linux, whatever, whatever you prefer. I, I already done that, so, so I already installed it. So if I open here, Docker here up, it might take a second to open. And so it probably takes a second to start up. You can see here above, I have a symbol that is telling me that Docker is, is starting up. Now, what it's doing, I, I open here a new, a new terminal window. And here, for example, I can check if I have any running images, if I have any active images. So this prompt probably takes a second since it's still starting up. All right. So here you can see I don't have any active images. No, what I want to ask you is, is here going on, on this web page here. It's uh, hub.docker.com, geochamo slash geochamo. I will put this in the description of the, of the video, of course. And now you can just take this, this command here, copy it, and we're going to use this here to, to pull the Docker image. This will take a second. And I should point out Docker is, is more for your local use since it needs root access. There is other ways of running this for, for clusters using Singularity, but I'm not going to discuss this in this video. You might hear my computer making sounds um, since I don't have a very good microphone. Apologies. All right, I right, finished downloading. So if I now uh, write Docker images, we see that we have now a new image. Now to to enter this image, just write Docker run dash v. So this one we do this for for mounting for mounting um, this the current the current directory. This is quite useful mounting. I mean that that inside the Docker system, uh, we have one folder that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna be the same in this current system. So we can copy uh, out of the Docker environment uh, all of the data that we want out to, to, to our current environment. So we have the fo folder settings already prepared, specifically in the, in the Docker environment to do this. And of course, we, we tell him which image to use, and it's the geochamber slash geochamber image that we want to use. Okay, Docker run. And now you can see we're now inside the image. And all right, so LS, we can see we already have all the folder ready. And now to run a black hole binary, I'm just going to go here into, into this into this uh, here the folder. Oop, I didn't want to I didn't want to close this. And and now I can I can just start to run this. So I'm just gonna run the executable. We have here um, oop, uh, so we have we have some parameter files that that allow you to run some a very cheap version of the code. And I set this up and now uh, we are computing a uh, black hole binary. This is a fairly intensive uh, computation, so this this might this might uh, this might make your um, um, might make your computer quite a spin actively. 
You can here see that activity monitor that indeed the here it's it's the docker docker is using significant portions of the system. So I'm gonna stop this, it can run for quite a while, so feel free to have to leave it running. I'm gonna stop it, it will take a while until it does that. And so now we have some new folders. So we have the data that we are putting out um, here, HDF5. We have some, these ones contain the metric evolution of the black hole binary. There's some, in the, in the wiki, there is some more description on how to, to look at these files using this visit, or we have also some uh, uh, scripts for Python that can, can take the data from these HDF5 files and do some analysis and or visualize them as you prefer. Furthermore, we have also here some information of what the machine has done. Here, this is the Pout. You can see here that it gives you information of the evolution. Um, lastly, also we have some data that we extracted. For example, um, you can see we have here different uh, gravitational wave modes that we extracted that you can afterwards, again, use to, to, to visualize. So now, if you want now to, to so now since we're now in the in enclosed in this environment and you want to put these files to your system, you just take HDF files and copy them to settings. This might take a bit, it's lots of data. And now we move these, all of the data to our settings. And um, I can now close my environment. Now I'm back to my previous system. And here you can see I have now in my system my HDF5 files. I can here open them using the system. And indeed, I have these HDF5 files here in my system outside of the environment that I can now manipulate using, using uh, any, uh, any other software. Right. Thank you very much for listening. I hope, I hope that got you started. And uh, uh, enjoy, enjoy the, the numerical relativity.